to them and we decided well maybe we need to take like some of the most nerdish thing you can do take a selfie and uh, with, the, with the with the crowd so we were just like doing this and afterwards we uh, did see the pictures and they were crap so we invested in our latest coolest gadgets we worked our, we worked our butts off together it's such a great gadget can anyone tell us what that is oh you just did so i need your help either you can come closer or you just need to wave so we can make a, a selfie do, do a thumbs up yeah Three, two, eight. It's not Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> it's Bluetooth, so. Turn it on. Yeah. Yeah, otherwise I'll just press it. Three, two, eight. Yes! yes. You can buy the picture for two euros and. Uh, <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, that was it. Thank you. <laughs> that would be cool, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, well, um, salam or mehaba, um, welcome. Um, what are we going to do today? We're going to talk about testing, functional testing, by the way. Does anybody know uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide? Who doesn't know the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Be honest. It helps. Okay. No problem. It's a good movie. It's a good book. It started out with a book. So before we continue, we first want to know who who the audience is. So who ever done testing for Android? Any web developers that d done testing? Okay, what are you using as test framework? Selenium. Selenium. Okay. Re remember that, Selenium. Okay. Who of you in here is Android developer anyways? And who is, who is not? That should be the rest, I think. Well, sort of. Some some of them might be asleep. I don't yes. know. It's warm, I know. Okay. Well, you obviously have to know who we are. So this is Ali Derbane. Uh, no, he's not Turkish, although his name is. Uh, he's a senior Android developer, a really good one, and he's a speaker. He uh, speaks at conferences worldwide. He's really well known for his humor. But I don't think <laughs> it's going to, to be uh, here today. Yeah. All right. Oh, 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 I'm already, I'm already there. Sorry. Yeah. So two clickers will never work. No, we got two of them. Anyways, um, standing next to me is Ruby Alziger. He is also worldwide well known. Um, also by Mr. Glass, I think. Android technical lead at the company we both work at. Um, he is also one of the co-organizers, or founders even, of the GDG Dutch Android user group. I think I'm not the only one who has trouble saying that in one sentence. Anyways, um, yeah, it's a cool, uh, cool making, user group. Are you making friends now? I, I am. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Um, we both work at iTunes Mobile. We develop Android, iOS, and mobile web applications, and we are also hiring. So if any of you are planning on moving to the Netherlands, which is really cold, so I suggest you you don't, then you can come and work with us if you want. You're, you're forgetting what we also, we, we also uh, are expert in user experience. We help customers make cool apps, and uh, we complain about the coffee. It's important. I don't drink it. Yeah. So, um, what are we going to be talking about? Um, functional testing, as we've said, and the, the important thing is to know sort of what functional testing is and why we do it. So, this is. Um, sort of wiki thing, you can read it. In my words, uh, functional testing is uh, going through an application but then in an automated way to test the functionality of your application. So for example, you have an application in which you log in, you test the functionality of logging in and you test if um, stuff goes wrong, um, how you handle that kind of stuff. That's, that's basically it. Um, we, we'll, we'll see later how, that, you know, how you can apply that. 
Well, I'm not really interested in what it is. I do want to know why I need to use it or why you need to use it. So I'm normally asking myself question, well, what's the reason why we, why we chose to do functional testing? And it took me one year to find actually the, the, the good sentences. First, you, have, you can check the functionality. If I do a change, if I add a feature, I am writing a functional test and I can test if it works. I don't need to hire somebody that's doing the manual testing uh, as long as I have some sort of way of describing the test and you can run it. Also, you can check the quality. If there's a mistake and I fix it, is the mistake not recurring at a later moment? Is it when I uh, change my application, does it still function? So, floor zero doesn't exist. This is actually a picture I took when I was at, where was I, Berlin, I think? And uh, you know that you're ready for change if you can run your functional testing. So, Mr. Samsung decided to work for Apple. Maybe he should have figured out it's not probably the best idea with that name. But again, if I do a refactoring of my code, I can still run my functional tests and I know nothing breaks. Uh, basic, ba basically, you're trying to prevent you're hitting yourself in the face. So this is probably one of the one of the small features, one of the small reference to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, I guess. I've seen this many times and I still laugh at it. Well, um, what shall we do? Shall we go to the, the frameworks or? Uh, yeah. Uh, I come sit, there's also plenty of room here. You missed the most fun stuff. We, we gave away phones and tablets and... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so unfortunate. Yeah. Um, shall we give, before we test, shall we give them an example of the application that we're using to test these kind of frameworks? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Well, uh, I made an application, we made an application that's basically a calculator, so we can calculate what's the answer to the universe and beyond, and that's 42. So if every, if, if somebody ever has a question, the answer is always 42. It's a magic number. But this is this is a, 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 a good uh, example that we're going to use to test how the test frameworks use. So every time I want, uh, my functional test is 6 multiplied by 7 and it should be 42. So now have, let's have a look at the different frameworks. Ali. Yep. <laughs> well, oh, well, I'll, shall I tell about it? Yeah, you yeah, yeah, should. Sorry, sorry. Okay, Robothium. Robotium, Robotium, how do you pronounce it? It is Java based, so if you're a Java developer, you can write a Robotium test. And it's a sort of what you see is what you get kind of uh, declaration in your Java code. The sort of, you still have to write Java. So it's not a, a non-technical uh, uh, way of describing your functional test. It is a technical way. So let me give you an example. If you want to set up, obviously for all, all other for all the frameworks we're testing today and showing you, you need to have some sort of library or package. Uh, so I'm not going to mention this, but let's say you have the jar. You within your test setup, you have to define a solo project. And with that solo project, you can say, well, I'm going to test this activity. Um, then actually writing the test is describing what a user is doing. Like click on the text, click on the button. Uh, the only downside is you have to test if the current activity is started. Uh, and checking the result, you, you just say to the solo object, wait for the text 42 to appear. This is quite difficult when you have an async task, but you can work around for that. But everybody can see this is not really rocket science, right? Well, and if we run it, I'm a really big Cradle fan. If you were at my last talk, I'm a really big Google fan. So I'm using all the neat, neat stuff that is out there. So I'm using Android Studio. So I'm using uh, Gradle. I can run the 
uh, tests at a normal way, connect and or test, connected and or test, and I get this cute little HDMI page showing everything is done. One thing you have to consider is the package is chosen as crap because it was for a different conference, so spare me. And the duration is something to remember. We're also going to test if the, or show you the different uh, speeds and performances for the different uh, functional test frameworks. Well, so what can we say about RoboGym? Well, the, a the APIs are easy to use. You can see you, uh, you don't have to have a, a, degree, a master's degree to figure out how to write a unit test. Uh, there are a lot of examples and different ways to show you how you can test an application with Robotium. Uh, but it isn't really the fastest. It has to start your application. If you do it in a, uh, a normal way, it has to uh, uh, uninstall your application, install the new application, run the test. And that single test might take a little while. So from all the frameworks, it's not performance-wise the best framework out there. She's taking a picture. There's two euros, by the way. Portrait right. <laughs> Just kidding. He doesn't care. <laughs> OK. Ali. Yes, so next up we're going to go uh, into Solando, but before we do, I just want to um, see hands if some of the stuff we just talked about is unclear or if you have questions about it, because um, so you know the next um, frameworks are going to be having the sort of same pattern and we're going to be talking about it like that. Are there any things that are unclear? No, that's good. You did a good job then. Maybe. Oh, somebody's raising their hands. Okay, cool. Uh, can I question? There is a square or triangle in the graph. Um, so you're going into sort of visual UI related things. Um, I think the short answer is not really no. Uh, so no, I think I think these frameworks that we're going to be talking about are not really for um, things like that. So it's mainly just for uh, input stuff, um, clicking stuff, seeing if the text appears. Um, so I think your use case is not um, going to be these frameworks is not going to be good for your use case. I think. Sorry for that. It is a good question, by the way. It is. He deserves a tablet, but we don't have any, so... Maybe sorry. we can give away prizes, but <laughs> more on that later. Yeah, exactly. Some uh, typical Dutch stuff. Cool. Anyways, um, I'm going to go into Solemnwood for now. All right. Uh, also, Java-based. Oh. Java-based. Um, so the, the test you write, you write in uh, Java. Who of you know Java? It would be weird when That's I'm very good. No, all right, so you can all start writing Solano tests if you want. It's also sort of WYSIWYG, so you um, define the steps as you um, want to uh, go through your application or uh, your, your test sequence kind of thing. So uh, the setup is a bit more complicated. It's a lot of code. Uh, what it basically comes down to is the fact that on your uh, laptop or on your, the, your, your computer, um, you run a server part, and the server communicates with the client part that runs on your Android device or emulator. So you have a little piece that runs on your device or emulator, and you have a little piece that runs on your uh, computer, and they sort of communicate um, back and forth to uh, perform these steps and to read out what um, has been performed. The slides will be up sometime next week so you can see the code, you don't have to take pictures or whatever. Um, but this is what it does. They want to take pictures of you, Ali. But you can, you know. Cool. Um, so, if you create that sort of um, server and cl uh, client part, then you also need to clean that stuff up. This, this does that. But now the part where you're most interested in. Yeah. I have a question. When you, when you tear down, does it, uh, it actually is not good for performance? Because with every test you run, you have to tear down. Is that correct? Um, well, in this case, it does it after the class. As you can see, I, I, li I like using my laser. So as you can see here, 
Um, so it does it after all the tests has been uh, done for like the whole uh, thing you've been testing in that Java file. So it does it once. Okay. So it shouldn't affect uh, well, maybe a bit the time, but I think I think it's uh, nudgeable. That's a weird word. Anyways, uh, so the test, um, as you saw in the previous um, framework, here you can see it again. What you do is you find elements and you click on buttons and you uh, check what the result is. But the way you can find stuff is a bit different. So, for example, you can uh, find an animal element by partial link text. What that means is, in this scenario, uh, the clear button, which has CLR in the name, we can find a partial text of that button. So we're searching for CL and that's enough. I think C would have been enough as well since there is no C button on our calculator. Um, other things, you can find it by ID and that's the ID you define in your Android application. You can find it by XPath. I'm not a very um, XPath expert, but I will explain in a second why it's still quite interesting. And uh, you can have link text, which is like the actual text of uh, the button. And then at the uh, the bottom, what you do is you assert. Do any of you know JUnit? So yeah, this assertion I think you should all know. Uh, so you're just checking if the text uh, that you expect is is visible. Um, I just mentioned that XPath is not my. Uh, I'm, I'm not a big friend of XPath, or he's my enemy. I'm not sure. Um, but one of the nice things is of uh, Selandroid is the fact that you, um, once you run your test, you can go through a hierarchy, so you can see your actual screen in the browser, in your web browser on your computer, and you can see uh, the buttons that are there, and you can see the input fields that are there, and you can actually click on a button, and then it will generate that XPath for you. So for the lazy people out there who've used lazy, I think it's more. I don't believe you. You're liars. Anyways, for the lazy people out there, you can just click through the application, and I, I did that for that step. Just click through it, and it will just generate like a, a big bunch of uh, XPath things which you can put in your test. And um, I haven't found a way to do that for reading out the results. So yeah, you still have to do some typing, I guess. So, uh, you run it in JUnit. I am also a big fan of Gradle and Android Studio. I didn't get it working in there. Um, maybe I could have, but it, it, I didn't get it working, so. Um. To, to be honest, you complained the whole night, and you had a headache just trying to run it in Gradle. Yeah, I did, I did. See my head? It looks pretty good, because I had so many headaches because of getting this stuff running. Um, the result? It's like a green thing, it's always good, but yeah, it's only one test. So, uh, the good things and the bad things, works well with JUnit, and if you know JUnit, it can be pretty easy to uh, sort of do your assertions and stuff. It's debuggable, so you can actually put like a breakpoint in your tests and step through it, which is quite nice, I think. Um, like I said before, you have like a hierarchy viewer and you can click stuff, which is like the WYSIWYG editor. And another thing that gave me even more headaches is the fact that I um, wrote my first Solandroid test and I, I was so happy that I sort of got the, the setup working and I saw that stuff was being done, but it wasn't done right. And I figured out myself, I didn't really find it online, but I figured out myself that if I uh, try to run the test uh, on an MDPI device, which I think are getting pretty rare, so that's not a good thing, um, that it would work. So that's something you should keep in mind when you run your tests and they have funky results, that you should try it on an MDPI device and then they might. So that's it for Solandroid. Was there any anyone got questions about that before we go to the next one? No. All right. Yep. What Two. Device. That's the sort of uh, resolution. So, for example, the Nexus 4 has, I think, a HDPI uh, resolution. I think MDPI devices are getting quite rare, so I, I um, got these tests working with an emulator. 
Yes? Uh, do you need to run an emulator or device for this test? Mm -hmm. Emulator or device, they both work. Um, well, actually, that's a, that's a good question. Um, as far as I know, it's possible for Solando to start up uh, emulators, even of different uh, versions and um, uh, screen sizes for you when you run your tests. So that's, I think, a good thing. I think there was another question over there. I got my answer. All right, cool. Yeah. Let's go to the next one then. 15 minutes. So, Rogue Electric. Again, it's Java-based. But the cool thing is, you don't have to have a device, an emulator, because it's run. It, it's running in its own visual universe, let's say. It is a simulator. So the cool thing is, it is fast. It is specially written for that simulator. Uh, it is based on JUnit, so the normal way would be you have your test, you have your setup where you create, uh, where, where you gave your testing activity to RoboElectric. Beware, you have to say, I'm running it with uh, the RoboElectric tester, and uh, it should, the, the, because it's not an emulator or a device, it should know what kind of API it is testing against. The downside is, I was uh, testing it with 19, and 18 works, 20 works, but 19 doesn't, because there's a big bug in it where you cannot run uh, Robotium tests, or Roboelectric tests. So the test is similar to the other ones. You can find uh, your, in, in this case, the buttons by ID, and you say, I'm going to perform a click. And the result is basically getting your edit text and do the normal JUnit assertion. Again, that's easy. Uh, I I can run everything on Gradle, so I can you. say you don't have to actually use clean, but for me as running a test, I think a basic situation would, would work. So I'm always using like clean of uninstall. And you get a nice cute HTML page again. So you don't have to have a you don't have to buy a device. You don't need to run an emulator. It's it's running in on its own uh, sort of universe. It is using JUnit. So if you use JUnit, it's much easier to use because it has its own uh, universe. It is really fast. But the downside is if I want to test a bug that's only one uh, that's only occurring in a Samsung device, I can't because I'm not actually have a Samsung-like emulator. So that did, this was a really downside for me. Calabash. There's a question at the front oh. here. Yeah. yeah uh, as far as I know, it doesn't support uh, upper API levels more than 18, probably. Uh, yes, it does support 20. It's, it's start, it, it is supporting 20. I don't know 21, but it's supporting 20. Yeah. The JUnit versions can use this for all that quick. Three and four. Ooh. Was that a trick question? That was a trick question. Good job. Uh, he wants the pass. Yeah. <laughs> Another question there. Yeah. Is RoboElectric uh, supports uh, RoboJuice and uh, the Android support libraries are not complex libraries? And now it's a good question. Uh, yes, RoboJuice, and in, I don't know the app compared. I didn't have any problems with that. Good question. Well, well I was trying to run the RoboElectric tests with the uh, app compat libraries. There was always an uh, error with the, the app compat libraries itself. Did you, did you say on which uh, API it should be running on? Exactly like the one. Okay. I will help you uh, afterwards and we'll have a look. Okay. Ten more minutes to go. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. It's cutting its close. Yeah. So, um, Calabash. Who of you know Calabash? And use it. Okay, well, I think a lot of you might learn, learn something now. He's quiet now. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, um, 
what this is is um, it's also a testing framework that you can uh, use to sort of describe your um, tests in a natural language. You'll see in a second why that is or how that is. And the na natural language is called Gherkin, which is also a healthy thing, I think. So uh, just healthy stuff for you. Um, the setup, what you need to do is you have a folder structure, something similar like this. And in this folder structure, you define a file called a dot .feature file, which you can see there as well. And um, there is also place for some custom steps. I'm not going to go into that right now. Well, the main interesting thing is, is the feature file. So in a feature file, um, typically you um, define a sort of test case for a specific page or screen of your application. So for example, let's say we would like to build in a login page before we get into a calculator because we want to have a top secret calculator, which is really good in a way, I guess. Um, you can define a feature file for the login part and you can define a feature file for your calculator part and that would be two feature files in your folder structure. So, um, yeah, in a feature you can define multiple scenarios. So let's say we are logging in, then we can have the scenario that we successfully log in, so with the uh, correct username and password, or we can um, log in with a wrong password and then you, sh you have different behaviors so you expect to get an error message or something like that. Okay, um, do any of you have trouble reading what this test does? <laughs> Hassan, you really, you really want the goodies, right? Okay. How, 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 have, how do you have trouble with it? You don't understand English, okay, yeah, then, then I'm very sorry for that. I, I can translate it maybe in German. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, the, the point is, is that it's readable and also writable by uh, even non-technical people. You don't need to have any Java knowledge to write tests like these, I think. Um, so a bit about the structure of a scenario, you can uh, define given, when and then. And what given does is it sort of sets your application in the right state. So let's say we want to create a feature file for the actual um, testing of the calculator, then what we assume is that we are past the login page. So given we are logged in could be a step. And then afterwards, um, you can define when. And when you define when, um, you're going to perform something and you want to see the outcome and you see the outcome and you define then. These are just um, words, but they make sure that people understand what the intention is of that. So if I would want to, I could write this, rewrite this test and just have every step start with given and it would still work and still succeed as we can see in the next step. So. Again, I know, no greater for me, um, not yet. I think they might be working on it, but uh, yeah, I used command line to run this um, Calabash test and the result is a nice HTML page that shows uh, the steps you took and what the results are. If a test fails at some point, then they will automatically add a screenshot of the application as it was when the test failed. All right, um, features can be written and read by most people, in my opinion. It's available for iOS and Android, which I think is quite a, a bonus. Um, custom steps, which I'm not going to go into, are written in Ruby. So, for example, uh, the login step is something that you need to define yourself in, in a Ruby-based way. Uh, so that's something I needed to learn to actually be able to write sophisticated Calabash tests. It occasionally returns false negatives, which means that um, it says that something is not working, but it is, um, which is a bit annoying, because yeah, you can understand why it's annoying. So that's Calabash. And the last one, oh, and the last one is Espresso. It's the new thing. It's the new thing on the market. <coughs> Again, it's Java-based, so I can write tests as a Java developer. But it has the approval of Google. 
Yes. The reason why uh, it is it is invented by the Google. Uh, help me out, Philip. The Google Technical Test User Group. Yeah. Yeah. So um, and uh, basically, it's uh, people that really love Google and are really passionate about testing, and they decided to create something cool that. It is working with all Android applications. There's no setup. You just download the jar and you're done. And all um, Espresso is telling you, you have a view, and with that view, you can do stuff. So you're getting the view, and you want to have the text that says seven, and then you perform something. In this case, you do a click. So again, this is a normal way of, of, of uh, seeing how user interacts with, in this case, your application. And also, checking the result, I still want my view. I, this time I want to get one the ID, in this case the, the results, text, edit text, and I want to check it to see if it matches the text 42. Uh, this might take a little while to figure out, but if you get the hang of it, it really works. Again, I'm running it with Gradle as uh, how you normal would do like unit, unit test and you get the same uh, HTML page. Well, for me, it is easy to use, although there's not much APIs, I, I still know, I, I, I'm, I, it was easy for me to set up. Uh, because there's a big community out there that supports uh, this software and a big company, it, it works and the performance, it is one of the best out there. Peter, <laughs> yeah. um, can you maybe go back a slide? I'm going to use my laser again. I think there's something missing here. There must be something which is not good about it. I couldn't find it. Well, actually, uh, it is still separate. Although, wait, 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 wait. I have a big surprise. There is a new framework out there that contains Espresso. S since uh, DroidCon Berlin and since DroidCon London, Google finally said, well, we're going to take testing really, really seriously for you developers, and we're going to publish uh, what's called the Android Testing Support Library. So uh, during, I think, the beginning of next year, when you type in Android in your uh, DOS prompt or your terminal, the SDK manager will start, and it will have a, some cool new supporting library. And what does it contain? Well. No more instrumentational test runner. It is changed. It is more because actually you're, you want to do it with JUnit. It is renamed to the Android JUnit, and it supports Android. Uh, of it supports JUnit three and four. It has the full stack of Espresso and Espresso version two, by the way. And it has something new, and it's called Intento. And Intento basically is mocking out the service that you don't have any control over. Let's say I want to test if uh, the user is pressing the call button and the call is made and uh, I get an answer in return. Normally with a Java application you write some sort of mock where you can actually have that function um, focused out of the actual tests. With Intento you can do the same. Really cool, really, really cool. So these are the test frameworks we tested. Um, I think we need to rush with our conclusion. Well, uh, Ali, what did you think of all the frameworks? Well, uh, yeah, I've been using Calabash for quite a while. I'm quite a big fan of it, but one of the main things that I think is um, uh, annoying me a bit is the fact that there is false negatives. So I don't like that too much. And I got quite curious about Solandroid, mainly maybe because I'm quite a lazy developer and I just <coughs> like to click, click, click and just have my tests done with. But I'm quite curious to get into depth with that. So, yeah. Yeah, and I really like <coughs> the portable side of Calabash, but it is really flaky. And of course, I'm a big fan of Espresso. Uh, so for me, the new framework would be cool. Yeah, I think one of the most important things I would like you to take away from this presentation is the fact that um, 
testing can cost a bit of time, investment, money, maybe for your boss in the begin, beginning. But if you uh, get your testing stuff up and running, I think in the long run it will save your boss lots of money. So just just tell him that, and I will have a talk with him if he doesn't agree with you. If you do, however, want to uh, get to know a little bit more about the complete Android uh, testing stack and uh, how it can benefit you, there is a talk by Philip at uh, three at that time. At, uh, which which room? B. B. In room B. He's sitting right over there. Yeah. Uh, and then I think it's, it's already past our time, so thank you. We don't have any questions, and that guy gets the prize. Which guy? That guy. The one with the problem. He, he's got his hand raised. Do, do we not uh, start? I think we have five minutes for, uh, for questions. No, I thought it was still 40. 45, right? No, 40? 40. Okay, then, then no questions. Okay. Well, you can, you, we'll be walking around so you can ask more questions if you want later, yeah? Thank you very much for your time.